come along and explore the Christian life through the adventures of a cowboy. This is A Cowboy's Progress. Yeah! When I last left off in our story, Christian had just gone through the valley of the shadow of death and had met with his old friend Faithful. The two of them had talked for a while and then seen Sheriff Shepard, who told them that one of them must suffer in Dodge City when they came to it. Both Christian and Faithful had said they were willing to die for their faith, and then Sheriff Shepard had left them and the two friends entered the city. It was a bustling place filled with people who were selling all kinds of things. Beautiful beads and bracelets, little statues, dresses, fancy suits, rings, and everything shiny or that would catch the eye. In the darker parts of town, one could even buy murders or trade things illegally. Christian and Faithful knew that all of it was worthless and had no real value, but was only there as a trap to any cowboy who walked past. So they pulled their hats down low over their eyes and kept walking straight ahead through the town, trying to get to the other side. Buy our beads. You know you want them. You must have the luggings of your heart. Come and fulfill the desires of your flesh. We have all you could possibly want. I am certain that you shall be satisfied with our products. Both cowboys shook their heads and stuck their fingers in their ears. We only wish to have the truth. Before long, the townspeople began to call them names. They threw stones at them and finally they handcuffed them and began to beat them. They took away Christian's gun. The two cowboys were tormented all night long by being left in the cold without any food or blankets. There was one woman named Hopeful who snuck in at night and gave them some water and washed their wounds, but I'll speak more of her later. It was a long and uncomfortable night. But the two cowboys spent it talking with one another about the great western city and the prince who lived there, and how wonderful it would be to actually see him. When morning came, the townspeople again gathered and took them to see the judge, whose name was Judge Hategood. He was a wicked man, and it was almost certain that nothing good would come of the trial. Judge Hategood called out two witnesses, Miss Lyre and Miss Blind who singled out Faithful and said terrible things about her. Faithful has been an evil woman and has even said nasty things against you, the most excellent Judge Hategood. That is most serious. I, Miss Blind, saw her stealing from all of our citizens. I saw her kill another chap in cold blood. And I can definitely see, just by looking at her, that she's a terrible person. I've heard enough! The sentence must now be passed. He didn't even allow Faithful to give a defense, for Faithful had done none of those things she was accused of. The most wicked woman, Faithful, ugh, is sentenced to hang by the neck until death. Then the crowd released Christian but carried Faithful outside and hung her from a nearby tree. But after she had died... I saw that a fiery stagecoach swooped down from the sky and flaming horses took her soul to the great western city. It was then that the woman named Hopeful, whom I mentioned before, came up to Christian. Christian, after seeing how Faithful died and that she was faithful to the end, made me want to be like her. I want to join you on your journey and see that heavenly city. So having lost one friend, Christian found another and the two set off. But before long, the road became very hard and rocky, and their feet began to hurt. On the side was a green meadow that went alongside the path, and who should they see but Mr. Worldly Wise Man standing there? I say that. Come over to this side of the fence. The grass is greener and the way is smoother, and you can see that it's just the same as if you are still on the path. No, but we are supposed to stay on the path, even if it looks to be the same on the other side. We might as well try, and this man seems nice enough. Well, my feet are killing me. All right. The two went over the fence to where Mr. Worldly Wise Man was. You made the right choice, my fine friends. Well, I must be off now. 
I have much to do before the day is through. Then good day. What are you riding on today? What? How could you even ask such a question? I'm riding on a brand new automobile. One of the first ever invented and the only real means of transportation a true gentleman should ever use. Ta-ta! Hopeful and Christian didn't notice, but the meadow led just ever so slightly away from the true path, and soon it was dark and they found themselves lost and far away from the place they were supposed to be. The next morning, they were discovered and captured by Rancher Despair. What are you doing on my property? You are now mine. And with that, he snatched the two cowboys and took them to his deep cellar. He beat them, starved them, and kept them from sleeping and did everything he could think of to the two poor pilgrims. He tried to get them to kill themselves because, as he said, there was no hope left for them. Their god could not save them now, and they had no use living. They sat in the cellar for many days, but Hopeful was always trying to encourage Christian. Then Christian remembered that when he had last seen Sheriff Shepherd, he had given him a key named Promise, made by the prince himself, and with it he could open all the doors of Rancher Despair's house. He used it on the cellar and then on the huge front door, which creaked open slowly. Rancher Despair woke up and furiously began to pursue the two pilgrims, but the sun was shining that day, and he was completely weak and powerless in the sunlight. So he stormed off back to his house to plot how he might capture other travelers and trap them within his cellar. Christian and Hopeful were very thankful to be out alive and set up a sign next to the road warning other cowboys to stay away from Rancher Despair and not to go near the path of doubt at all, for these will end up destroying even a good cowboy like Christian, unless God rescues him with the key of his promises. The two pilgrims were hopeful that they would soon reach the great western city, and thankful that they had survived so far. They prayed that God would see them safely to the end of their journey, which, Lord willing, I will speak about next week. Yeah! And so ends the story of my dream. Come back next week to find out what happens to the young cowboy named Christian. Yeah! Good morning. I hope you enjoyed our episode today. It was pretty exciting, wasn't it? Our friends had to go through some pretty difficult things. They faced many temptations in Dodge City. They were arrested, falsely accused, they were thrown in jail, and faithful even died. I imagine that when you go through similar difficult things, that you're tempted to despair, you're tempted to lose hope. That leads us to our theme for today, the theme of hope. When we talk about hope today, we are most often talking about things that we wish might happen, things that may or may not happen. We might say, oh, I hope it doesn't rain today, or I, I hope I can get a dog. It's something that we want to happen, but we can't make happen ourselves. And so we are just hoping or wishing that it might happen. But when the Bible talks about hope, it's talking about a sure thing, something God does. And since God does it, you can trust that it will happen. The Bible most often talks about the hope of redemption. Do you remember what redemption means? It means being set free from your burden of sins. And how can you be set free? By repenting of your sins and trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now you may understand why the Bible talks about the hope of salvation. It's based on what Jesus did when he died on the cross. It doesn't depend on something that may or may not happen, like saying, oh, I hope God will forgive my sins. No, it's a sure thing. When you repent of your sins and trust in him, God forgives you of your sins forever. Now you may understand why the Bible talks about the hope of salvation. 
It's a sure thing because it depends on what Jesus did by dying on the cross for your sins. It's not something that may or may not happen, like you might think, oh, I hope God will forgive my sins. No, when you trust in Jesus as your Savior, he forgives your sins forever. It's a sure thing because of what God does to save you from your sins. That means you don't need to be afraid about whether or not you'll persevere until the end, whether or not you will keep going until you reach heaven. Instead, you can have a sure hope because God has loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to be your savior, and he won't let you fall away. You don't need to be afraid of death either. I know that's a scary subject, but you don't need to be afraid. Remember what happened to Faithful in our story. When she died, she went immediately to heaven. You can have that same sure hope as well because Jesus is your savior. Death is not the end, it's just the beginning of everlasting life with him. The hope of the Bible also helps you when you have doubts. Christian and his new friend, Hopeful, were tempted by Mr. Worldly Wise Men to leave the straight and narrow path. And I know what you're thinking, no, don't do it, don't do it. But they listened to Mr. Worldly Wise Men again. He invited them to cross over the fence. The path that they were on was rocky and hard. And instead of staying on the straight and narrow path, they climbed over the fence to a place that seemed to be easier. But Mr. Worldly Wise Men tricked them again, didn't he? That path did not lead to heaven. Instead, it led them down a path of doubts. They were even captured by the evil giant rancher despair. This represents how doubts and despairs can attack your mind. Despair is that feeling that you can't go on, you lose hope. And doubt is the fear that comes when we're uncertain of things. We begin to worry and wonder about the promises that God has made. We doubt the truth that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And the more we worry, the less we seem to be able to do anything. It's like being trapped in that cellar of giant despair. The more you doubt, the more you worry. The more you worry, the less you think of the promises of God. To escape the rancher despair, Christian and Hopeful remembered the promises of God. They were given hope again based on those sure promises. This is what Romans 5 says about our hope. Now hope does not disappoint because of the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Did you hear that? Hope does not disappoint because it is based on what God has done to save you. Here are two questions to think about this week. Number one, what are some of the things that make you afraid? Remember that even though you're afraid, God has given you a sure hope. It's based on what God has done to save you from your sins. Number two, how did Christian and Hopeful escape from rancher despair? They remembered the promises of God, and those promises gave them hope. I pray that those same promises would give you hope, too. I look forward to seeing you next week when we take up our last episode. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next week for the final episode. Thanks to everyone who submitted a photo for Crazy Hair Day. Here's some of the photos of people's crazy hair. Whoa! Zoom Wonk! Pew! Pew! The next contest is to do either a drawing, a 3D craft, a picture wearing your VBS shirt, or comment your favorite part of the story so far. Don't forget to click the link above. We've got games, recipes, and Bible memory verses with sign language. We're so excited to see your submissions. See y'all next week. Bye. Bye.